taken it and for the patients that I have that are taking it, it's been phenomenal. In my practice, I was getting to the point where I couldn't have the strength to see that many patients anymore. And I was introduced to the fruits and veggies. Just slowly, my strength started to come back. And it was because of the good nutrition. I can't say enough good for Balance of Nature and what it's done for me. I recommend it to everybody. Don't wait to see what getting over 10 servings of whole fruits and vegetables can do for you. Right now, Balance of Nature is offering free shipping and 35% off on any new preferred order of fruits and veggies. Start your journey to better health today by calling 1-800-2468-751 or by going to balanceofnature.com and use discount code CHICAGO. It's open enrollment season, and MediShare is a Christian health care sharing ministry that saves most families about $500 a month. Google MediShare and see if it is a fit for you. 637. Let's get a check of the roads this morning in the Team Hochberg Traffic Center. Here's Jim Telemonte. In Niles, Milwaukee Avenue remains closed between Hearts and Waukegan Road. This is near Tui due to a major early morning collision. Inbound Kennedy delay start at Canfield. It's 26 minutes, so here to downtown. Half on 22. Inbound Eden's little tight foster to the junction. Inbound Eisenhower delay start at Van 34 minutes, 390 to downtown. Half on 29. We're on I-55, traffic slow 53 to 355. Lamont Road to County Line, and Cicero to Pulaski. 46 minutes, 355 to Lakeshore Drive, outbound 40 after an earlier crash at County Line. Ryan runs 20 minutes, 95th to downtown. I-57, Bishop Ford, both 23 minutes from I-80 to the merge. Tollway traffic is light. I'm Jim Calamonte on AM560, The Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next. Your official Chicagoland weather forecast from the one-hour heating and air conditioning weather center. Considerably uh, cloudy today. Spotty snow showers falling across the area. High 33. 31 officially at O'Hare. Next news coming up at 7. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next on AM 560. The Answer. Listen to AM560, The Answer, online at 560theanswer.com on the AM560 mobile app and your Alexa-powered smart speaker on TuneIn, iHeart, and Radio.com. Get into the question and answer phase today, of course. And I thought he, uh, uh, his choice to remind senators of the words of some of the House managers from 20 years ago was a good one. He played video of Jerry Nadler. Zoe Lofgren, two of the House managers, as well as uh, Ed Markey from Massachusetts, now a senator, Bob Menendez from New Jersey, and, of course, the celebrated minority leader, Pagliacci, Chuck Schumer. Here's what those five had to say just 20 years ago when it came to impeachment. There must never be a narrowly voted impeachment or an impeachment supported by one of our major political parties and opposed by the other. Such an impeachment will produce the divisiveness and bitterness in our politics for years to come and will call into question the very legitimacy of our political institutions. This is unfair to the American people. By these actions, you would undo the free election that expressed the will of the American people in 1996. In so doing, you will damage the faith the American people have in this institution you and in the American Zoe. democracy. You will set the dangerous precedent that the certainty of presidential terms, which has so benefited our wonderful America, will be replaced by the partisan use of impeachment. Future presidents will face election, then litigation, then impeachment. The power of the president will diminish in the face of the Congress, a phenomenon much feared by the Founding Fathers. This is a constitutional amendment that we are debating, not an impeachment resolution. The Republicans are crossing out the impeachment standard of high crimes and misdemeanors, and they are inserting the words, any crime or misdemeanor. We are permitting a constitutional, constitutional coup d'etat, which will haunt this body and our country forever. I warn my colleagues that you will reap the bitter harvest of the unfair partisan seeds you sow today. The constitutional provision for impeachment is a way to protect our government and our citizens, not another weapon in the political arsenal. Mm. I expect history will show that we've lowered the bar on impeachment so much. We have broken the seal on this extremely, extreme, 
extreme penalty so cavalierly that it will be used as a routine tool to fight political battles. My fear is that when a Republican wins the White House, Democrats will demand payback. And so payback is where we're at, right, Senator Schumer? Mr. Self-Fulfilling Prophecy? Cipollone went on to uh, emphasize a number of points that were made by House Democrats and Senate Democrats 20 years ago. Uh, but focus in on, you know, this thing we have coming up in November. What they are asking you to do is to throw out a successful president on the eve of an election with no basis and in violation of the Constitution. It would dangerously change our country and weaken, weaken forever all of our democratic institutions. You all know that's not in the interest of the American people. Why not trust the American people with this decision? Why tear up their ballots? Why tear up every ballot across this country? You can't do that. They've repeatedly said over and over again, a quote from Benjamin Franklin, it's a republic if you can keep it. And every time I heard it, I said to myself, it's a republic if they let us keep it. For more on this, we're pleased to be joined again by George Perry, former federal and state prosecutor, regular contributor to the Philadelphia Inquirer. He blogs at knowledgeisgood.net. George, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Okay, glad to be here. So uh, now that uh, both sides have presented their cases, uh, what's your review of the strength of the respective arguments? I think the uh, president's lawyers have totally destroyed and deconstructed the House manager's case. Uh, there is no case, and uh, I thought the way, the manner in which the president's lawyers went about uh, their arguments was really very effective, because not only in the uh, summation that you just played by uh, Mr. Cipollone, uh, throughout their efforts, they used statements by people like Adam Schiff uh, and uh, Jerry Nadler. Uh, they turned them around and demonstrated that Schiff was just a flat-out liar and that uh, Schiff and Nadler and the other House managers had selectively presented evidence and hid other evidence uh, from the Senate. And I just thought that it was a, it was a very, very effective uh, presentation by them. And uh, in front of a regular jury, uh, uh, that kind of revelation that uh, the prosecutor had been hiding evidence that was favorable to the defense would be absolutely uh, uh, conclusive. Of course, we don't have a regular jury here of disinterested people. We have a jury that consists of people who have a direct stake in the outcome of the litigation. But still, I thought it was a very, very effective presentation by the president's lawyers. Well, do you think it was effective enough to stop Republican senators from voting for witnesses? Because right now Mitch McConnell course, doesn't have the votes to block witnesses. Yeah, look, uh, <clears throat> you're at, it's, let, let me put your question this way. Uh, does uh, Mitt Romney have a, a spine or... Will he grow a pair and uh, do the right thing? Who who knows? I mean, all of this comes down. You've got like four squishy Republican senators uh, who are going to analyze this thing strictly in terms of what is best politically for themselves. Right. And you know, the answer to that is something that only only they know. It's entirely possible, however, that. Uh, the uh, senator from West Virginia, Manchin, uh, which is coal country and where Trump is very popular, and the uh, senator from Alabama, Jones, where Trump is also very popular, they may be peeled off by uh, the Republicans. So whether or not they're going to be uh, witnesses, uh, it's, it's anybody's guess. Uh, let's, let's, uh, speaking of, of the prospect, though, and particularly John Bolton, since that's the uh, emphasis of the Democrats. Mm -hmm. uh, how does John Bolton testify 
and uh, work around any assertions of executive privilege that President Trump may make regarding his testimony. If that's not going to be adjudicated by a court, how, how is that how is that going to uh, be navigated by the you know the the court being the Senate? Well, in in regard to Christine Blasey Bolton, um, he's already let the cat out of the bag. I mean, he's written this book apparently, and he's already violated uh, the president's confidence. Uh, you know, the the executive privilege as such. So it's kind of like trying to, you know, lock up the barn door after the cow's gotten out. Um, he could he could very easily come in and, and testify. But my whole point with Bolton is if he says everything that they claim he said, so what? Well, I, I agree I mean, with that. No, no, I, I agree with that. But I, but I still this this notion yeah. of executive privilege. Right. They, they chose not to litigate it. Uh, the House right. House Democrats chose not to litigate it. The president still possesses it. Uh, yeah. The the U.S. v. Nixon makes clear that it does exist. It just didn't exist in the the holistic way that Richard Nixon wanted it to exist with respect to his conduct. But it it is a real thing. And so, how can it just be waved off by subpoenaing John Bolton? If there's the questions or topic areas that the president says, well, this I'm asserting my executive privilege here. He can't discuss these things. Uh, the senators can just over, vote to override the president's executive privilege. John no. Roberts can just wait, can be a one man, uh, a, a one man high court and make a decision about where the executive privilege be, begins and ends. I, I, you know, I, I, doesn't no. that present a complication? Well, it does, and it would have to be litigated, and it would have to be litigated before the full court. Roberts can't sit as a one-man body to resolve the ultimate issue of executive privilege under these circumstances. So, of course, it could be litigated. But how long will that take? Well, right. And, and so, and, of course, and my, you have to, if, yeah. if you keep your eye focused on the real goal here, what the Democrats want to do is drag this out as long as they can and bring in as many witnesses as they can because their purpose isn't to remove the president. Their purpose is to dirty up Trump as much as possible and to keep this show alive and going for as long as possible. Well, so, no, no, I, yeah, I, I you're going to have to litigate it. Yeah, see, and, yeah. and, and, and this, is, this is what I wanted to get to with you as a, as a prosecutor um, because mm-hmm. I, I don't think this is a, a point that Republicans have been making about uh, the prospect of John Bolton testifying, and they should be making it because this is not like, okay, you get one witness and we get one witness and it'll extend the thing for a week. No, no, no. If the president exerts the, his executive privilege, as he did with respect to Bolton's potential testifying in the House, then then this could go on for months as it winds its way through, well, the high court, really. I mean, it could go on for a long time. Yeah. You, you would think that would get expedited hearing before the court. But still, right. this this extends this whole matter for uh, a significant period of time. And that should be communicated by Republicans to other, you know, dumb, dumb Republicans, as well as to the American people. Well, yeah, I mean, all of that's true. All of that's true. Uh, and it would be heard on an expedited basis, I mean, especially since you got the chief justice of the United States uh, sitting in the middle of this trial. I'm sure he could uh, get the thing heard on an expedited basis. Um, but it would have to be a decision made by the, the entire court. And everything we know about executive privilege, there is no way in the world that Bolton himself should be allowed to testify to conversations that he had with the president as the president's national security advisor. Right. That's clear. Right. But here we have a we have a manuscript. So what if they wanted to present the manuscript? Um, I suppose the, the the you know the manuscript is being vetted for national security purposes. I suppose you could say, well, let's put an embargo on the manuscript. All of that is perfectly valid and perfectly true, but, of course, it gives rise to the smear by the Democrats that any efforts to uh, honor the Constitution and to preserve executive privilege for the sake of the office of the president, not for the sake of Trump, but just for the office, all of that is nothing but a cover-up. And that will be the argument that they will make, not only in regard to Bolton, 
but any other witness that uh, they wanted to call if at any point, and, and by the way, there's no way that this would stop just with Bolton. The Democrats will keep coming up with names and proposing witness after witness after witness. And finally, there would, there would come a point when the Republicans would say, no, that's enough. And then they'll still be accused. Same of argument. Cover up. Same right. argument. Right. Do you think yeah. John Bolton is secretly a Democrat? I mean, I don't understand what what happened to him. <clears throat> I, I don't agree with the book. The I, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. What did you say? He's just an angry guy. Look, he, he got fired. You know, when we used to investigate, uh, you know, business uh, enterprises, uh, we would start with, okay, who just got fired? That'll be a good source. <clears throat> and, you know, Bolton got fired. And one of the reasons he got fired was because he was leaking information. So, yeah, John Bolton, you know, he's is, is got good, solid conservative credentials, but that uh, doesn't mean that he doesn't have an axe to grind, and I think he's just been lying in wait. And this idea that, you know, uh, he didn't put anything out there. No, he's written a book, which I don't think he, if if the book contains conversations with the president on confidential matters, then I don't think he should have written the book in the first place. But he sent it over to be vetted by the national security apparatus, which leaks like a sieve. So he had to know that this was going to come out in public when he sent that manuscript over to be reviewed. And the timing of that, to me, is highly suspicious. He is George Perry, former federal and state prosecutor, regular contributor to the Philadelphia Inquirer, blogs over at knowledgeisgood.net. George Perry, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Take care. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. The more you listen, the more you listen, the more you'll know. This is Chicago's morning answer. Morning answer on AM 560. The answer. The Lou Dobbs Financial Report is brought to you by Signature Bank, helping local businesses succeed. Visit signaturebank.bank for your commercial banking needs. I'm Lou Dobbs. Consumer confidence up again. Ford recalls F-150s in Canada, but not in the United States. And the federal budget deficit soars. Those stories next. Albert Einstein once said the only...